Hi students, these notes are over sequences, and sequences are something that you have seen for a very, very long time, um, but we're just going to put it into algebraic terms. So there are a lot of vocabulary terms and notation that we need to become familiar with before we dive into some of these problems. So first of all, a sequence is just a list of numbers, usually following some kind of a rule. So this could be like two, four, six, eight. You've seen these when you were little, and they usually ask you to continue the pattern. So you look for a pattern and then you continue the sequence. So we're gonna really focus on the rule part, which is similar to what we've been talking about with functions. And then here's some of the notation that we need to notice. So A of N, this represents any term in the sequence. So the actual numbers themselves are called terms. And this is just like function notation. A is the name of the sequence. N is the position or the, the spot that that number's in. So the first term would have an n value of 1, the second term would have an n value of 2, and so on. Those are, it's the position number, it's the input. All right, so like we said, a of n, that is, that represents any term. So any output would be the terms in my sequence. a sub 1 represents the very first term. And that's when n equals 1. When your position is 1, it's that very first number in the actual sequence. So if we were doing the sequence, you know, 2, 4, 6, 8, you guys know this one, right? It's a real basic one. The uh, first position would be the 2. So it would have an n of 1. And then the outputs would be the 2, 4, 6, 8. 4 would have an, an n of 2, 6 would have an n of 3, and so on. a sub n minus 1, so there's a lot of these letters, and it can look a little overwhelming, but it's really not that bad. That represents the term before another term. So sometimes in a sequence, we'll take one of the terms and we'll use it to find the next term rather than using an input value to find the next term. So I'll show you what that means when we get to that. But just know that that means before another term. There are two kinds of sequences. We have arithmetic and geometric. Arithmetic it involves adding. And it's the number you're adding to one term to get the next term. So in the 2, 4, 6, 8 example, you would be adding 2 to the previous number to get the next number. And that 2 is called the common difference, or D. So these are just a lot of vocabulary words we're going to be using. There are also sequences called geometric. And this is when we are multiplying by a number to one term to get the next term. So we'll look at some of those too. Now what we've got here, uh, this is, these are the common forms of an arithmetic sequence and a geometric sequence. So sometimes you're going to be asked to write these function rules. And this is just an easy way to do it. So for an arithmetic sequence, and you can tell that by looking at the pattern to see, well, what is being added between the terms? Sometimes it's a positive number, sometimes it's a negative number. But that number is going to go right here where D is. Okay? And then the only other thing you need is A sub 1, which is your very first term. So you would plug them into that, and that would be your formula for finding any term in the sequence, which is A sub n. For a geometric sequence, that's when you have a number that you multiply one term by to get the next term. That number is called a common ratio, and we represent that with r. That number would go here. The only other number you need, once again, is that very first term, that a sub 1, and then that'll help you find any term in the sequence. So we're going to look at what I've done is I've pulled some, a lot of these are old star questions, so you can see what they would actually look like, and then I've added a couple others as well. 
Uh, one of the strategies for doing these sequence type of questions is called the pick three strategy. And me and some teachers just kind of made it up back when I taught eighth grade math because this was actually a concept taught back then. Um, so the way that it works, if you see a sequence, you see like a list of numbers and it's talking about the different terms, you know you have a sequence problem. So here's the strategy. First, you're going to number each term. One, two, three, four, five, and so on. Usually there's like five or six terms. Those one, two, three, four, five, those are your ins. That's like your input or like your x. Then you're going to circle the third term where n equals three. Okay? And then you're just going to focus on that one. Then they will give you some function rules or maybe one function rule. And you're going to plug in three for all the n values and see which one equals that third term in your list. So I'll show you how to do that on some of these type of problems as well. But this is a good strategy for multiple choice type questions on sequences. So here's an example. This is actually a star question, an older one. It says the first five terms in a pattern are shown below. When you see that word terms, I want you to think we've got a sequence here. Okay, and then the very first thing you want to do is you want to number those numbers one, two, three, four, and so on until you reach the last number shown. These values are the n values, they tell which position these numbers are in. Okay, and you can convert this usually into a little table. The, um, the terms themselves, those are your outputs, those are your a sub n's. So those are your outputs for different input values or different position numbers. It says if the pattern continues, which expression can be used to find the nth term? Basically, we want to know which of these is going to give us any output we want when we put the position number where n is. Okay? So what we're going to try, we're going to try the pick three strategy. So here's how it works. We've already numbered our uh, sequence, one, two, three, four. We are going to focus on the third one. And the reason why we pick three, it actually just makes it a little bit faster. You could start with one, but many times um, when you input one into these expressions or into these rules, you might have a few that actually give you that first output. So it's just actually more of a time saver than anything, which is why we pick we start with three, so we kind of just jump to one. So what this, this means, where I've circled in pink, when n is three, the, the output is zero. The term is zero. So in all of these examples, we're going to put a three where n is, and we're going to see which of these gives us an output of zero. So we've got 0 0.75 times three minus 1.25 we've got negative 0.25 times 3 minus 0.25 we've got 0.25 times 3 minus 0.75 you kinda get the you kinda get the deal here point negative 0.5 times 3 plus 0.25 and then we're gonna evaluate each of these so you can just type these in your calculator and it'll tell you the outputs so for the first one, I think it gives us an output of 1, which is not the 0 output that we want for that third term, right? We want an output of 0. So this is not the one I would want to pick. All right, B, negative 0.25 times 3 is negative 0.75 minus 0.25 would be negative 1, I believe. Again, we're looking for an output of 0, so that's not what we want. C, 0 0.25 times 3 is 0 0.75 minus 0 0.75 does give us that 0 that we want. Don't stop there and circle that answer. You need to try every, every answer because sometimes an ex, uh, one of the rules will work for two different rules might give you the same output. So if that ever happens, you would just go to a different input. You would just change the 3 to like a 4 or 5. But usually when you start with the pick 3 strategy, it will work the first time. But you need to evaluate every single answer choice. So the next one is negative 0.5 times 3. That's negative 1.5 plus 0.25. 
that would be negative 1.25, I believe. Still not that zero that we want, so now I am certain that C is my answer. And if I wanted to be absolutely sure, I could go back to my other inputs. I could put a 1 where N is and see if I get negative 0.5. I could put a 2 and see if I get negative 0.25 and so on, just to be absolutely sure. Okay, so this one actually looks a little bit different, but I still know we're talking about a sequence because it says, but this time we have this for our function rule. Now notice that in a sub n, those subscripts, like this n right here, those, we don't have to do anything with that. That doesn't mean we replace anything, okay? That's just telling you which a it's talking about. So that a sub n, that is the same as a of n, like our function notation. Sometimes with sequences, they put it as a subscript. So if I wanted to, I could rewrite it like this, if that makes me feel better, okay? Then it's four times a sub n minus one. So back at the beginning of our notes, we said that's the term before the term we're trying to find. So a sub n minus one, okay? So this literally just means the term before the one we're trying to find. So whenever you have something like this, I suggest making a table. An n and an a sub n or, or a of n output. So your n's, you always want to start with 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, right? Now if we look at our, our uh, it wants to know what are the first four terms in our sequence, all our answer choices have four outputs, so we should at least have 1, 2, 3, 4 inputs. So it also says that a sub 1 is 6. That means our very first term is 6, so that's going to go here, okay? Now the way we're going to find our other terms is from this part right here. Okay, so we're going to take the previous term and we're going to multiply it by 4. So to get the next term, I'm basically going to take this 6 times 4 and my next output will be 24. Then I'll take that 24 times 4 and my next output will be 96. Then I'll take that 96 by 4 and my next output will be 384. So rather than putting in into my rule like we do when we um, evaluate functions, we're actually using the previous term, the previous output, and we're doing something to it to get the next output. So these are my outputs. These are my first four terms. So my answer choice would be F. This star question is a lot like the very first one that we did. So you see it says the first six numbers in a pattern. A pattern is like a sequence. If the pattern continues, which expression can be used to find the nth number in the pattern? So anytime you see nth or n, you know you're talking about sequences. So let's try that pick three strategy. That's where we number our terms. One, two, Oops, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. So those are going to be our ins. And then the one third, four third, those are our outputs. So remember what we said the pick three strategy. We're going to pick the third term. And our third term is also the number three, which is kind of nice. It's got, we picked the one that's not a fraction, right? So let's go ahead and try these. So in all of these expressions, we're going to replace n with 3 and see what happens. So in the first one, 2 times 3 divided by 3. Then we get 3 squared divided by 3. Then we get 3 squared divided by 6. And we go down here a little bit. 2 times 3 divided by 6. So we're going to evaluate each of these and see which one gives us that output of 3 that we want. So the first one, 2 times 3 is 6, divided by 3 is an output of 2. We want an output of 3, so this is not the one we want. B, 3 squared is 9, and 9 divided by 3 is 3. So this one is looking good. But remember, don't stop there. You need to try every example, or every, every choice. C says 3 squared, which is 9. Remember, 3 times 3 is 9. 
divided by 6 simplifies to 3 halves. So that's not the number we want. We want an output of 3. And then D says 2 times 3, which is 6, divided by 6 is actually 1. Also not the output we need. So B is our answer. So see how that pick 3 strategy works right away. It works pretty well. So this one is a lot like the last example, but this one has a figure we have to actually count to get the number in that position. So it's kind of already told us our, whoops, it's kind of already told us our, you know, our one, two, three, four. So this, the one, two, three, four, five, that's our in. So it gave us that. And we can convert this into a big old table, sure. So to get the the outputs are the actual term numbers we just need to count. So in that first figure, we've got three circles. Our second figure, we've got, looks like eight. Then we have 15. Hope I'm doing this right. Then we have 24. And then in the last one, we've got 35, I believe. Might have done that wrong, but I think that's right. So it says, if the pattern continues, which expression can be used to find the number of circles that make up the figure in? So basically, they just want which rule. So this is the same thing. We're going to use our strategy of pick 3. When we input a 3, we should get an output of 15. So we're going to put a 3 into all of these expressions. So on A, we'll have 3 squared plus 2 times 3. So there were two places to put the input of 3. Okay, then we have for B, 3 squared plus 2. For C, we have 2 times 3 squared plus 1. And then for D, we have 2 times 3, oops, 3 squared plus 3. So let's go ahead and simplify these. So for A, 3 squared is 9 plus 2 times 3 is 6. 9 plus 6 is that output of 15 we want, so this could be a contender. All right, B says 3 squared is 9 plus 2. That's 11. We want that output of 15, not 11, so B is out. C, 2 times 3 squared. Now, remember your order of operations. You always have to use your exponent first. So 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. 18 plus 1 is 19. Not the output we want. And then at the bottom... We'll do the squared first, 3 squared, 3 times 3 is 9, times 2 is 18, 18 plus 3 is 21, also not the output we want. So our, our A is the term that we want to use. Sorry, the, uh, the rule that we want to use. All right, this example is a little different. So again, we know we're talking about sequences. The first thing we might want to do is make a table with our n's and our f of n. Actually, I'm going to move it to the side a little bit so we can have some room to work if we need to. Okay, so we let's look at what we know. We know f of 0 equals negative 5. So when my position is 0, which we haven't talked about, I guess that would be before the first term, our output is negative 5. Okay. Then this is some interesting no notation here. This is saying to find the next term in so if n if f of we said f of or f sub n minus one, that's the term before the term you're trying to find. F of n plus one is the term after the term you're trying to find. So this one is saying, like, let's say I wanted to find, here, let me put my inputs, one, two, three, four. Let's say I wanted to find the, um, the first term. I would take the term before it, which would be um, the zero term, and then subtract three from that. So this notation, let me just show you real quick. So we have, and then I'm going to erase it. Let me write this. Whoops, minus 3. 
Okay, this is just the same as saying this. Okay, so if you look at the bottom, that's how you'll usually see it. To find a term, you take the term before and you subtract three. This one's saying to find the next term, you take the term before it and you subtract three. So, um, so this guy is before the one, the term right before this guy. This guy is the term right before this guy. Okay, so basically take the term before, subtract three. All right, let me erase all this. So sometimes you'll see this notation written kind of weird and you just kind of have to go with it and do your best. So basically what it's saying is take three from the term before it. So if I was to subtract three from negative five, I would get negative eight, right? If I would subtract three from negative eight, I would get negative 11. If I subtract three from negative 11, I get negative 14. And if I subtract three from negative 14, I get negative 17. So these, these are the terms. And the first thing it says is identify the type of sequence. So we haven't really looked yet at arithmetic versus geometric. But any time that difference between one term to the next term like we have here is you're adding or subtracting, which is what we have here. We're subtracting three, or you can think of it as adding a negative three. That number right there, that's called your D or your common difference. Okay, so we're looking for a common difference of negative three. Okay, so any of these answer choices would be good. G is out of here. It also says the first term of the sequence. Well, the first term, that's where your n is one. So that's actually this guy, okay? When your n is one, your term is negative eight. So that would be h, right? It wouldn't be 15, it wouldn't be negative five. I could see how you'd put negative five because that's when our n is zero, but that's actually before the first term. So be really careful. So it's probably gonna be h. And then the last thing, arithmetic or geometric. Well, let's go back to our d. Because we're adding a negative from one term to the next, we're adding, or you can think of it as subtracting, that's going to be arithmetic. If we were to be multiplying, that would be geometric. Since we're adding, that's why it's arithmetic. Okay? All right, in our last example, we've got two ones that we're going to try to do. We're going to actually try to write the formula. So this is not a multiple choice question. This is where you'd actually write it from scratch. The first thing we need to figure out is what type of formula we have. So I'm going to go back to the beginning. We can either have arithmetic or geometric. You've got to figure that out first. Basically, if you're adding from one term to the next, it's arithmetic. If you're multiplying from one term to the next, it's geometric. Then after that, you're going to use the right form to create your, um, your rule for your sequence. So we might come back here in a minute. So first of all, we gotta identify the pattern. And so this is something that you've done when you were little. So in A, we have negative 12, then we go to negative six, then to negative three, then to negative 0.5. To me, it looks like we're having the term in front of it. Or we could be multiplying by one half. Okay, so try to think of a number that you're either adding or multiplying by. We wouldn't be adding a number to get the next term because um, it's, it's different. It would be um, adding 6, then adding 3, then adding 1.5. So it needs to be the same number all the way across. But if, if, I, if it looks like I'm adding, or sorry, multiplying by 1 half each time, and that number's the same, right? It's the same 1 half, then that means we're going to go with that. So that means whenever you multiply, that means you have a geometric geometric sequence. If I was to be adding or subtracting, it would be arithmetic, okay? So the form for geometric is a of n equals a of 1, which is your first term, times your r, 
to the n minus 1. So all we need is we need to replace the a sub 1 and the r. The r is this little guy, the 1 half, okay? The a sub 1 is your first term, which is that negative 12. So we're just going to plug those guys in and we'll be good. So a sub n equals a of 1 is negative 12 times the r is the 1 half. That's called your common ratio. That's what the r stands for, n minus 1. And that would be your, your sequence rule. All right, let's do something similar with this next one. This next one, um, to go from 2 to 20 to 200 to 2,000, it looks like I'm multiplying by 10. So again, this one looks like a multiplication one, which means we've got a geometric. So remember geometric, it's this, you know, this formula up here. This is the generic formula. So a, a of n equals our a sub 1, that is this 2, that's our first term, and then our r is this times 10. So those are the numbers we're going to put in. So a sub 1 is the 2, that's the first part, times our r, which is 10, to the n minus 1 power. And that's it. So if we were to have one that was, um, let's see, the other one is arithmetic. Let's go ahead and do one of those as well. So you just add this to your notes. Okay, so here's another one we can look at. So this is your sequence, 8, 13, 18, 23. And first, you always want to look at the adding or subtracting from one term to the next term. So it looks like I'm adding 5, right? So this time I'm adding and not multiplying, okay? If you're adding and not multiplying, you're going to have an arithmetic sequence, okay? So the form, the way that we write that equation is like this. A of n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So all we need to know is what's our d, what's our common difference, that's this plus 5, and then our a sub 1, that's your first term, which in this case would be the 8. So we're just going to plug in those values, and boom, we've got it. So a of n equals a sub 1 is 8 plus n minus 1 times the d, which is 5. So this would be your function. Now, sometimes on a star test, or you know one of those multiple choice type things, they may go a step further and simplify that more. This would be fine, but they might actually want to distribute that 5 in and combine like terms. So you might see this written in another form. Let's see what it might look like if we did that. 5 times n is 5n. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. So this is where we're distributing a 5. The 5 is behind the parentheses rather than in front, but it's the same process, okay? Now I can combine the 8 and the negative 5 to make 3. So now my rule or my function is 5n plus 3. So this function rule and this function rule actually mean the exact same thing. So just keep in mind, sometimes they'll write it in different ways. All right, let's go practice.